Uh, my name is Caleb Austin. I'm the campus pastor here at our Roanoke campus, if you're new here. Um, I'm really glad to be with you this morning. I'm glad to get to share some things with you. Um, my wife is out of town right now. She went to see her folks uh, yesterday. And so yesterday, I just cleaned the house uh, all day, and it was amazing. Um, because when Roman's gone is the only time where you can clean something and it stays clean for more than 11 minutes. Uh, he's two and a quarter. Um, I'm gonna go by quarters with him um, because every quarter, like, we made it. We did it. It's going great. Uh, no complaints, but two and a quarter is where we're at with him. Uh, and 11 minutes is all you've got once something's clean. Uh, so I, I was cleaning through some different things, and I was going through um, things that I never do. I'm not very um, past-oriented as a person. I generally don't look at my own history at all because there's not much of it. Um, I, there's, I'm 30. Not a lot's happened yet. Um, but I was going through different things. We're... Um, We've moved several times, and we still have high school stuff at our house. It's unbelievable that it has existed this long. Um, but I was going through, and I, and I was remembering these times. Um, I was in a band for a while through high school. Uh, I probably seem like that guy. <laughs> I, I shower way more now than I, I did then. Uh, so I had it in my head. I was going through my senior year book, and we were like, we're going to get signed this summer. Like, we're going to tour around, and we're going to play whatever gigs we have to, and we're going to get signed. And I was like, yeah, that, that would be amazing. So we played tons and tons of gigs that paid zero dollars and, and promised people always, and people rarely showed up. Um, but at, at, when we got home, nobody went with us to these gigs, right? And so we lived in the delusion that you sort of have to live in when you're, when you're going out and, and touring. Uh, you tell people like it's going really well, even though you drove four hours to play for 14 people and, and three of those were parents of the, the other people who were gonna play after you. Like, you tell people, oh, it was great, uh, which is not, it's not true. Uh, but... My, my point is, at, at one point in, in our tour through the summer, which was really just random gigs, different places, uh, we went to Chicago. And, and we like to tell people that we had a gig in Chicago. It, wasn't, it was like 100 people. It was, like the, it was the biggest gig we had ever played, and most of them came for somebody else. We got on the bill because we were friends with somebody. Um, and so when I got there, I grew up in Muncie, which is not that far from here. It's a little bit south. It's about an hour south of here. And when I got there, they were like, where are you from? And I was like, what? What are you talking about? This girl was helping us unload all of our stuff, and we were getting it, getting it all organized. And we are talking about the gig that night, and she was like, where are you from? Like, not far from here, that's where. She says, you sound like you're from Kentucky or something. <laughs> and I, did, I grew up, FFA was the biggest club in our high school. It was, half of everyone was in it. There was a tractor day. Where, yeah, right? People drove their tractors to school, and, and it was a big deal because even if you didn't have your license, you could drive your tractor. Uh, anyway, uh, this, this thought just kept occurring to me this whole last week. Like, where you're from is evident in how you talk. Like, you can hide a lot of things, and you can tell people that things are going like this, you can tell yourself things are going like that, which we lived in total delusion for three months 
um, which was obvious by our incredible record sales, which were like 100. Spent thousands of dollars to record it for those 100 people. I hope they liked it. We, we lived in delusion. But when we got to a place that was different from where we were from and we started talking to them, they knew we were from nowhere. They knew it. Not, not by what we said, just listening. And so I wonder... It's hard to hear your own accent. But this morning, I I would encourage you to to examine conversations that you've had this past week. I want you to think about what you said and why you said it. What was your accent? Where are you from to everyone else? We like to say things like we're, we're citizens of heaven, like we're children of God. You sound like that? Do you have a heavenly accent? I knew this part would be hard. It's supposed to be. My role pretty much every week is to bring you to a point where you get to look at something that isn't congruent in your life with the word of God or with what he wants for you. And you get to decide whether you're gonna make the change and bring it into alignment or whether you're gonna tell me to eat it and then go away. And then we'll try again next week. Yeah? This one's gonna sting a little bit. Because we like to say things like, I'm a good person. And you might be the holiest person at your workplace. So what? You might be the holiest person at your school. You might be the holiest person in your house. Don't look at your spouse right now. Don't look at them. You might be. So what? How do you speak? What comes out of your mouth? Let me ask you this. Would you say to your kids or to your spouse, would you take what you say to your kids or your spouse and say it to a stranger? There's lots of us that would say no. Why is that? See, it's hard. So I don't want to just point something out and go, We're a mess. There's real solution. If you would like the real solution. You have to decide that you hate it. That you hate that it's like this. Because it's a lifestyle change. It's not changing brands of gum. Where you're like, I guess I'll buy that one now. Changing the way that you speak takes time. But it helps if you do it with people. If you can't take the things that you say to yourself, and I don't mean just out loud, I mean internally. If you can't take the things that you say to yourself and say them to a stranger, you need uh, to reevaluate. 
That's probably the worst one. Like you may say mean things to your spouse, but it's nothing compared to what you say to yourself. Look, I, I, I'm not making fun of you. I've, I've been there. And there are times where I think I've arrived. And there are other times where I go, I, I, I gotta work on this still. Here's the problem that we've been having. If you go up to if you go up to somebody and start having a conversation, you want to give away your faith, you're going to reproduce what you have. And I want you to go and reproduce out in the world, right? I want you to go and talk to other people about Jesus. This is important. It's a huge part of our faith. But also, I, we have to be sure of, of who we are. And I think we get a little put off when the world goes, we don't want what you have. We go, how dare you? And then I ask you the question, if you can't say what you say to yourself to a stranger, why would they want that? They already have that. Huh? Man, I'm like preaching a funeral up here. I know it's heavy. I'm really sorry. Jesus talks in Matthew 12. Thirty-four. He talks about it in, in twelve, and he talks about it in six. This idea that trees trees are known by their fruit, which is why you never look for strawberries on a tree. Right? Because that's not where they grow. You don't look for apples on a vine. And, and there are trees, you don't go up to an oak tree and go, where's my apples? Right? It doesn't produce apples. That's not how it works. I'm going to be nicer, I promise. This is the good part. So in 34, he's talking to the Pharisees, but he says, for out of the overflow of your heart, the mouth speaks. The good man brings good things out of the good stored up in him, and the evil man brings the evil things out of the evil stored up in him. How did they get in there? How did the thing stored up in the person get in there? Because this is the fix, right? Out of the things stored up in your heart, that's what's coming out of your mouth. How did the things get in your heart? We put them there. Well, now we're on to something. Because we're not going to look at you and go, you're wretched and there's nothing you can do about it. Like, that's, that's a bad word. You should not listen to that. Look, there are things that we, we took in. Some of them were given to us by people that we trusted. There is nothing that you think about yourself that wasn't told to you. I would defy you to find one. There's not a thing that you think about yourself that wasn't told to you, which is why how we speak to our children is so very important. What we say to them is so very important. 
because they believe you. Whether they do what you say or not, they're listening. And their life will reflect the words that you speak over them. Every conversation is important. Now, in, in order to get kind of a handle on this, we have to practice other things and we have to fill ourselves up with other stuff. Um, the reason that what comes out of our mouth is very similar to what comes out of the world's mouth is that we're watching, looking at, talking about all the same stuff that they are. If you write down your routine and then someone else at your work who doesn't believe in Jesus, what is the difference? Do you understand what I'm saying? Their routine is your routine. What's coming out of your mouth is the same as what's coming out of their mouth. So you don't say this to, to make you feel bad. I say it to go, look, we found it. This is the problem. You can change your routine and therefore change what is being put inside of you. That's good news. I bet. You control what you put inside of you. And so I, I get some flack from, from other pastors because when I tell somebody to start reading the word of God, I'm, I'm talking like half hour to an hour a day. I want you to read for a half hour to an hour a day. And they're like, that's way too much. They're gonna burn out. But I, I say, you watch Netflix for three hours a day. What's an hour? You have it. I know you have it. I haven't met somebody that doesn't have an hour. Not yet. And if you read an hour a day, I know you actually want something. If you shoot God a text every once in a while and go, hey, uh, I love you and stuff. I go, okay. But when you're knocking on his door day after day after day, he, know, he knows you're serious. Are you with me? And generally, when I say start reading, if it's a half hour a day, that's great. It's more than you're reading right now. And I never have to ask somebody if they're reading scripture. I just listen to what they say. It's not hard. And I'm not like a magician divining this great big thing. But if I hang out with you for two hours and you don't mention it, you're not reading it. Because you talk about what you're interested in and you talk about what's filled you up. Now, not everything that you talk about is bad. I mean, parents talk about, talk about their kids all the time. Those aren't bad. Don't get rid of them, you know? Keep them around. That's good. Uh, however, if that's all you have to say, something's wrong. And we would say the same thing. We, it's, very, uh, it's much easier with somebody who has something bad coming out of their mouth, right? If, if all they talk about is work, you go, oh my gosh, you're a workaholic, because we have a word for it. We go, this is what's wrong with you. You work too much. And yet, if a mom can only talk about her children, we go, she's just a good mother. And I go, if your wife can only talk about your kids, then she needs time to be who she is. Because your kids are going to leave. They're supposed to anyway. <laughs> they may stay a couple extra years, but eventually you want them to, right? They're going to go away. What's left of who she is? It's 
See, I told you it'd get better. She has to have a life outside of that, which doesn't mean she has to go out two nights a week and, and see friends or whatever. Just have conversations that are about like, hey, what do you like? What do you want to do? You understand what I'm saying? Okay. So we get to test what we care about by listening to our own conversation. And it's a little bit of a hard, a hard thing to, to discern, but if you start listing a conversation later on in the day, if you go to lunch, and you're probably gonna go to lunch, you talk to each other, just talk to each other normally. But then after that, write down what you talked about. Find out what is in your heart. It's a good deal. See, we, we change what we're filled with and what comes out of our mouth by changing what we eat, by changing what goes into us. And this is why I have, I have lots of folks that go, it doesn't bother me to watch this or to read that or two or two or two. They go, it doesn't even bother me. Okay, I can hear it. You can say it doesn't bother you but I can hear it. We have friends that are constantly like, you gotta watch this show. We, we can't. Like, we'll try it, and we can't. I go, what's wrong with you? I don't know. Mal's, Mal's extremely sensitive. She dreams about everything that she watches. And so she doesn't watch anything that has anything in it. We watch children's shows. I, I don't care. What goes, into, what goes into her comes out of her at, at a much more uh, sensitive level. It really bothers her. And it doesn't matter what you ask her to watch. She, she probably can't. And we get made fun of a lot for that. Can I tell you, it's, it's worth it to not know what Stranger Things is about. I'll never get to know because she'll always be my wife. And she'll have nightmares for a year about it if I let her watch it. And we're not gonna do that. Now, I'm not coming down on that show in particular. I'm just telling you. When you say, I don't even... I don't, it doesn't even bother me. Okay. Isn't it coming out of your mouth, though? Isn't it? There's nothing that goes in that doesn't come out. Something's happening. And for those of you that have more time, spend more time with God. Spend more time in the Word. Spend more time praying for your family. And you can acclimate. You understand, we didn't start praying for two hours at a time at, right off the bat. That will hurt you. Don't do it. When I talk about reading for a half hour, you have that kind of capacity. Now, I generally point somebody to the Gospels, which I've done to you a hundred times. Why do I do that? Yeah, I think it's an easy place to learn. I think Jesus represents the Father, so you get to know about what the Father is like. You get to read about the one that you, you say your life is based around. We have to be a people of the word. And what you read and what you think about and what you watch, it, it comes out of you. Uh, the other part of this is to, to start taking, um, taking your thoughts seriously 
and not letting yourself spiral on things that you shouldn't let yourself spiral on. When you start degrading yourself in your mind, you have to stop it. No one else can. They don't even know what's happening. It's one of those things that people don't talk about, so we're kind of isolated about it. But almost everybody does it, and you just don't have to. So you have to have a place for your mind to go when you're cutting off something like that. So when you're starting to spiral, you have to send your mind somewhere else. Um, it doesn't have to be a Bible verse. It could be, but realistically, just make it something good or something neutral. We would take neutral. You can think about the fact that today is the Super Bowl and the Chiefs are finally going to win the Super Bowl again. You could think about that. I would put that in the good category, not neutral. They've been my team since I was this high. And it has been a rough journey. <laughs> it's been a really hard time. And it's really not even my fault that I, I'm a fan. Um, my grandma thought she was buying me a Colts jersey. I'm not kidding. <laughs> I want you to think about the Colts jersey. And then I want you to think about the Kansas City Chiefs jersey. Put them next to each other. I want you to pick out the differences. <laughs> She's doing her best. She's not a sports person. We're not really sports people. We're, we're like the start a band and play for 14 people people. <laughs> you can think about those things. You can think about other stuff. This doesn't mean throw out your TV and get rid of all your stuff. But let's not be bewildered by what is coming out of our mouth. And practice complimenting yourself. It's my favorite thing to ask Christians to do. It makes them so uncomfortable. I've had disciples that I have with me and I have them say out loud the things that they love about themselves. Oh my gosh. It is the most fun ever to watch the, the internal battle that takes place where they go, I'm not supposed to say this because then I'll become prideful. And I'm like, you hate yourself. You're gonna become prideful? That's 20 miles that way. Let's go towards liking yourself. How about that? Practice. Practice. Jesus was never intimidated by the disciples being like, I'm, I'm the greatest. I bet. I bet I'm the greatest. He was not intimidated by that. And he never said, how dare you? He just went, Here's what greatness really looks like if you want to be great. And it's not what you're talking about. Just so you know. Practice complimenting yourself. This would be a fun activity. Do you want an activity? Yeah, I see that. I've got several that are like, we are not on board, actually. We're not. Uh, write down some compliments about yourself, say them. There, there are different levels to this. It's like working out. Uh, I don't know if you've done a workout program, but there's like, here's the expert level, and then they do a handstand while they jump in the air somehow. And they're like, here's intermediate, where they just do the handstand, and then they have my level, which is you don't do it. <laughs> you could say and just write the compliments down. Level two is, is writing the compliments down and then saying them out loud to yourself, but every day. Level three is saying the compliments out loud in front of someone.
this is kingdom stuff. Because if you don't like you, why would you want to reproduce who you are? Why would you want to give away what you have? Come on. You got to love yourself. Now, you can do the same thing with God if you want. If you need this to be spiritual in some way, I told you, read your Bible. Read it. Start in the Gospels if you don't have a place. Start in Proverbs if you don't have a place. I'm reading the Old Testament like crazy right now. Because I love him. I want to know what he's like. So when you open the Bible, don't just read something. Read it like, I'm going to get to know you. I'm going to spend time with you because whatever I spend time with comes out of me. I can tell where you're from by what you say. Are you excited for this new challenge? Give it a shot. If you want to make it about other people too, do it for your spouse. Do it for your kids. Try it with them. Try complimenting your kid. It will blow their socks off. You watch. It lights up their world. Try it with your spouse. You watch. It matters. Okay, this is my last story, and then we're going to go. There, there was a time not that long ago where um, I would come home, and I was, I was just really shot, and I, w- I was just really tired. And Mel and I would talk about normal things, about everyday things, um, but I didn't realize that I had gotten in this, you know, you could try this, you know, you could do this, you know, this might help you. I thought I was being helpful. But what she heard was, you're not doing it right. And what I see is you're not doing it right. And it didn't take very many days in a row before she was like, listen, you have to tell me that I'm doing something right. Do you even want, do you even want me to stay home with Roman? And I was like, wow, we have gone on a, on a crazy spiral that I had no idea that we were going on. In my head, I was like, I'm being helpful. That's where I stood. And she was like, he wants me to get a job and let somebody else raise our kids. You see like the disparity? Well, it it took like an, an hour to fix it because we talked about the disparity between what she thought and what I thought. It's not hard to fix most of the problems that we have, but you have to open your mouth about it. Yeah. Giving compliments allows them to see what you actually value. It's just a side note on the whole thing. What you say reveals where you're from. Would you pray with me? God, we're grateful for your word. And we pray that we would be trees that reveal your fruit. God, would you show us how to compliment ourselves and show us what you value in others. I ask that you'd reveal some things to us this week that you love about us. Because we can't be people who receive if we don't value who we are. God, we want to love you the way that you love us. We want to love ourselves the way that you love us. We want to love the world the way that you love us. We ask for these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 
Have a great week.